21st lecture on 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Today's message is from 2nd Corinthians chapter 11. The title of chapter 11 is Jealousy. Verse 2 says, For I feel a divine jealousy for you. Here we find the word jealousy. Chapter 11 is made up of six main points. First, verses 1 and 2, Bear with me. Second, verses 3 and 4, Do not be deceived. Third, verses 5 to 12, Paul defends himself. Fourth, verses 13 to 15, Satan's servants. Fifth, verses 16 to 27, Paul's service and labor. Sixth, verses 28 to 33, Paul his weakness. Verses 1 and 2, let us read. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband, to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Universally, it is a foolish thing to boast in one's self. Although he was aware of this, the Apostle Paul still had to boast. The reason is, the believers in Corinth who listened to false teachers looked down on Paul and departed from the truth that he taught. Because Paul loves them and wants them to stand upright in faith, he has no choice but to boast about himself. In today's words, we would say that Paul gives them only. Paul asks them to bear with his testimony. Paul does this for the good of the faith of the believers in Corinth. In verse 2, Paul says, For I feel a divine jealousy for you. We see the word jealous appear twice in other versions. With God's jealousy, Paul gave them God's love and grace so that they would love God alone. He desired for them to become more like the image of God. There is a reason why Paul worked so hard for the believers in Corinth. He worked hard so that ultimately, when Jesus returns, the believers in Corinth would be blameless before Christ. Because of this jealousy, God sent His one and only Son to this world to save us. Jealousy, Paul works and encourages the believers in Corinth. What do we know about the jealousy that Paul had for the believers in Corinth? Verse 2 says, Since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Believers are the pure virgin and Christ is the husband. The Bible compares believers to a virgin 
and Christ to the groom. Matthew chapter 25 verse 6, John chapter 3 verse 29, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 27 to 33, Revelation chapter 19 verses 7 to 9. Paul made the effort to betroth the believers as a pure virgin to Christ. We pastors do the great work of betrothing believers to Jesus. As our second point, verses 3 and 4, Do not be deceived, says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning. In the way the devil deceived Eve, in the past, he deceives us believers today. False prophets and groups of slanderers within the church of Corinth deceived believers. These false prophets act as if they are true servants of God. They pretend to love and comfort believers, but in reality, they break up the relationship between Paul and the believers. The false prophet's goal is to make believers depart from the truth taught by Paul, who is a true apostle. That is why verse 3 says, that the believers in Corinth have been led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. A believer is led astray from sin pure devotion when the devil deceives him. When the devil deceives, he disguises himself as an angel. Verse 14 and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. If we look at verse 13, we learn that false prophets disguise themselves as Christ's apostles. False prophets, by revealing Paul's flaws to believers, try to break up and add turbulence to the believer's relationship with Paul. What kind of being is the devil? Originally, the devil was a noble leader of the angels, but he became proud and went against God to be banished to a dark place. Satan is another name for the devil. The evil spirits and ghosts that appear by Satan's soldiers. Satan's nickname is Adversary. He is an adversary to Christ and the Church and he deceives believers and makes them fall down. Why are believers deceived by the devil? We can look at it in two ways. First, we do not apply our faith. Second, we do not love the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 Believers must apply our faith and follow the truth if we do not want to be deceived by the devil. Verse 4 For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, 
you put up with it readily enough. Paul rebuked the believers in Corinth for three things. First, they accepted and put up with false prophets who proclaimed another Jesus. Second, they accepted and put up with receiving a different spirit. Third, they accepted the preaching of a different gospel. Who is this other Jesus? He is the Jesus that the false teachers preach. They do not pro correctly know Jesus when they preach him. In the first century, there was the cult of Gnosticism. People who followed Gnosticism acknowledged Jesus Christ's divine nature, but they denied his human nature. Therefore, the Jesus they preached is another Jesus. Furthermore, the believers received a different spirit. This refers to the work of a false spirit. They are the wrong beliefs of mysticism and subjective sentimentalism. Today, in the end of days, the very wrong char charismatic movement falls into this category. Then what is a different gospel? Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. A different gospel is different than the correct gospel. It is the gospel taught by cults in the church of Corinth and the church of Galatia. Paul preached the gospel that said, Believing in Jesus is the only way to salvation. This is the truth. However, those who adhered to circumcision said, Although you believe in Jesus, you must be circumcised to be. They put forth a fundamentally different gospel. They also claimed that people must keep the law to receive salvation. The law cannot make us righteous or give us salvation. Jesus kept every law and fulfilled the work of redemption. We receive the righteousness completed by Jesus when we believe in Him. That is our salvation. Paul rebukes the believers in Corinth for these incorrect things. Third, verses 5 to 12, Paul defends himself. Paul believed he wasn't in the least inferior to the superior apostles. The superior apostles are the apostles Peter and John. Paul does not say this with pride. He is saying he isn't in, in the sense that God himself called him and made revelations to him, and also in the sense of understanding the truth. Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 to 17. Therefore, Paul has reason to defend himself. He is saying the believers in Corinth shouldn't look down on him. 
In verse 6, Paul says, Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. It seems as though Paul had much understanding of the truth of God, but was a bit unskilled in speaking. Paul understood the profound spiritual truth, but he could not fully express, express these things in words. Verses 7 and 8 Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted, because I God's gospel to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. When Paul preached the gospel in Corinth, he made and sold tents for a living. Sometimes he used the things other churches sent him. Paul did not receive wages from the church of Corinth, but he earned his own money as he preached the gospel. But false prophets criticized Paul for this. Why did they criticize him? The false prophet said, Paul didn't receive money when he preached because he wants to deceive the believers. They accused Paul of planning to earn the believers' trust and later steal everything from them. However, Paul helped the believers in Corinth with sin to cause no damage to the believers. Paul didn't receive money, but he worked as he preached the gospel. That is why Paul tells them not to think it a sin for him to help them as an apostle. The verse tells us that Paul received money from other churches. It isn't a sin for a pastor to receive wages from a church. Paul, when he worked in the church of Corinth, had the right to receive wages from the church. However, Paul, for the kingdom of God and his glory, did not receive wages from the church of Corinth. Instead, he received payment from other churches. Paul lived off the money the other churches gave him. It was as if Paul was robbing the other churches. Paul says, and when I was with you and was in need. This means Paul was in need of money for living expenses. Although Paul lacked money to live when he guided the church of Corinth, he did not ask the believers for help. Instead, he lived with the money sent to him from Macedonia. He did all of this to burden no believer. In verse 9, Paul says with resolution, So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. If a pastor burdens believers, he cannot guide them spiritually. If a pastor burdens believers, 
God does not help him either. Believers, if burdened with a heavy weight, will not obey in faith. Instead, some believers tempted by the burden. For this reason, Paul says he refrained and will refrain from burdening the believers. Verses 10 and 11 As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. There were many groups of people in Corinth that slandered Paul. Even still, because the sincerity and truth of Christ was in Paul, Paul says his boasting will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. Paul's boasting is his boasting in the truth of the gospel. The regions of Achaia include Corinth and the nearby area. No matter how many people slandered Paul and propagated that Paul was a bad person, Paul will be victorious because the truth of God is in him. The light of the truth cannot be blocked, but it continues to shine forth. Though it is completely dark, if there is light, the light spreads and shines. Therefore, it does not matter if there are many or few slanderers. What matters is whether or not we have the light of truth in us. If we have sincerity and truth in us, the truth will spread and we will be victorious. Paul didn't receive wages from the church of Corinth because he truly loved them. God knows that Paul loves the believers in Corinth, and Paul was satisfied in knowing that God knew. Verse 12 says, And what I am do, I will continue. What Paul is doing is preaching the gospel while supporting himself. He says he will continue to preach the gospel as he supports himself. Here, the verse says, in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim. Those who would like to claim are the false teachers. That's why Paul says that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. In the past, Paul did not receive payment from the church of Corinth as he preached the gospel. If he later says he will receive wages, then those who slander him will seize the opportunity to put Paul into a trap. No matter how badly people slander us, we must continue to do the right, not back down. Paul continued to support himself and preach the gospel. He did this so that those who slandered him would, like Paul, be true workers who did not receive wages from the church 
of Corinth. Verses 13 to 15 are about Satan's servants. Verse 13 says, Deceitful workmen. They are workers who deceive. False teachers disguise themselves as Christ's apostles to gain popularity among the believers and profit. As false apostles, they deceive believers. But the problem is, the believers are deceived by these false apostles. The teachings or fruits of these false prophets are not consistent with the Bible. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 4, Jesus says, says to his disciples about the end of, day, end of days, See that no one leads you astray. False prophets exist in every generation. However, we believers must not be led astray. Verse 14 says, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. These are not strange things. The reason is, the devil always appears this way. You must abandon greed and vanity if you do not want to be deceived by the devil. We must stand firmly on the word of God, communicate spiritually with Christ, and apply our faith to immediately abandon what is wrong and immediately follow what is right. Verse 15 says, So it is no surprise if his servants show themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Satan's servants are false prophets, people who are governed by the devil. They disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In other words, they disguise themselves as God's servants and deceive believers as they claim that they are teaching the Bible. If we look at their fruit, we can know that they are false prophets. You cannot gather figs from a grape vine. You cannot gather grapes from a thorn bush. Because they are not God's servants, they bear fruit that are not consistent with what, with what is written in the Bible. By looking at their fruit, we can know that it is the work of Satan. The devil makes us anxious and he steals from our The work of the Holy Spirit gives us peace and we have God's comfort and in abundance and life. What happens to Satan's servants in the end? Verse 15 says, Their end will correspond to their deeds. Eventually, false prophets will be thrown into the eternal lake of fire. They will be judged. In the past, when Jans and Jambres opposed Moses, they deceived many people. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 8 and 9 In the end, 
God disclosed their foolishness and judged them. Fifth, verses 16 to 27, Paul's service and labor. Verses 16 to 19, I repeat, let no one think me foolish, but even if you do, and so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying with this boastful confidence, I say not as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. Knowing that boasting in one's self is foolish, Paul could not help but boast a little in himself. Paul boasts of himself to the believers in Corinth, but he asks them not to think him a fool. He wants them to accept his little boasting. At all times, in the center of his heart, Paul wanted for the believers in Corinth to stand upright. This is Paul's humble attitude. In verse 17, Paul says he boasts not as the Lord would. He but I am saying this boastful confidence I say not as the Lord would. This does not mean Paul's words are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. He means his boasting a little does not follow after the Lord. The reason is Jesus did not boast of himself. Paul did not learn to boast of himself from the Lord. However, in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul boasts a little. Verse 18 says, Since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. False teachers boasted in outwardly things such as their studies, families, and religious rituals. Paul says he will boast a little of such things. He does this because the false prophets slander Paul as a very bad person. Corinth, influenced by these false prophets had misunderstandings about Paul. In order to resolve these misunderstandings, Paul says he must boast according to the flesh. Those who slander God's true servants while boasting of themselves are foolish people. Verse 19 says that if the believers in Corinth bear with these things, they are like wise people bearing with fools. Paul rebukes them because what they are doing is wrong. Verse 20 For if you bear it, if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. The believers in Corinth bore with the false prophets. With what motives did these false prophets approach the church? Slaves of the believers devour them take advantage of them, and strike them in the face. 
the false prophets made believers slaves of the law, and sometimes slaves to themselves. In clever ways, they deceived believers, devoured them, and took their possessions. By taking advantage of believers, the false prophets used them and took everything from them. They also elevated themselves to the position of apostle. Furthermore, they looked down on believers. Deceived by these false prophets, the believers suffered much loss. They found themselves in a pitiful condition. Paul rebukes the believers in Corinth who accepted false prophets. Verse 21 says, To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. False prophets elevated themselves and boasted in their strength. However, Paul always boasted in his weakness. Boasting in one's weakness is foolishness, but Paul always lowered himself when he spoke. The second half of verse 21 says, But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. In verses 22 to 27, Paul is compelled to boast in himself. He says in verse 22, Are they Hebrews? So am I. The word Hebrew means the one who crossed a river. The name was given to Abraham after he crossed the Euphrates River. Genesis chapter 14 verse 13. The word refers to Abraham's descendants, the nation of Israel. Next, the verse says, Are they Israelites? So am I. Israelites are the citizens of a theocracy. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. The verse says, Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. They are offspring who have received the promise of the Messiah. Verse 23 says, Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman. Paul says he is a true servant of God. He also toiled excessively for the Lord, and in faith he submitted himself to suffering. He had far more imprisonments. He was imprisoned four times. He was locked up in the prisons of Philippi, Jerusalem, Caesarea, and Rome. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon are called the prison epistles. These books of the Bible were written in the prison in Rome. Preaching the gospel, Paul received times the forty lashes less one. The law says it is a sin to lash someone over forty times. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 1 to 3. If they mistakenly strike someone more than forty times, it becomes a sin. To prevent this from happening, they subtracted one and lashed people thirty-nine times. This is the most extreme type of lashing. Paul received this lashing five times. 
he was also beaten with rods three times in the Roman way. One of these three, one of those three beatings happened in Philippi, Acts chapter 16, verses 22 and 23. Once he was stoned in Lystra, Acts chapter 14, verse 19. Next, it says Paul was shipwrecked three times, but God rescued him from the end a day he was adrift at sea. Paul suffered in the sea far away from land. Preaching the gospel for 30 years, Paul faced many dangers from many people in many places. Still, he sacrificed for the church, for the Lord and the church, and he worked patiently. But the false prophets tried to steal the work of others. When such people are compared to Paul, the people will know the true value of Paul. Sixth. Paul boasts in his weakness, verses 28 to 33. In various sufferings of the flesh, Paul endured pain as he daily worried for the believers. If the believers' faith became weak, Paul felt for them as if he were weak. If the believers stumbled, Paul thought about as if he were stumbling. But Paul boasts in his weakness. King Aretas in verse 32, who was the Arabian adopted son of Herod Antipas, was temporarily king of Damascus. His princes ordered the Jews to guard the city of Damascus to capture Paul, who had converted. Acts chapter 9, verses 24 and 25. After his conversion, Paul immediately bore witness to the fact that Jesus is Christ. Because he did this, he had to escape in a basket through a window. Paul escaped in a basket. This is Paul's weak side. In this way, Paul suffered greatly for the Lord. He did it all in the Lord's grace. Paul never forgot that he was a weak person but he denied himself of someone who boasts only in Jesus. This concludes the 21st lecture on 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Thank you.